Hey everyone, welcome to another split screen sessions with Country in the Park 2 artist Cassie Ashton. Hey, how are Thanks you? Goodness. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Where are you at today? In Nashville? I'm home in my kitchen in Nashville. Yeah. Very nice. So my co-host, Pat, he put me on to you. He's been obsessed with you for a few months now. He actually told our boss about you and was like, I'm obsessed with this song, <laughs> Dates and Pickup Trucks. She's gorgeous. You have to meet her. We have to have her out for something. So you can only imagine his surprise when my boss announced you as one of the artists for Country of the Park 2. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> so amazing. Very much looking forward to that. Have you ever been to Sacramento before? I think like very briefly. It's one of those radio tour, like less than 24 hour tiny. Now. So I'm excited. Yeah, you'll have to come back and, and do some fun things to really get the feel mm -hmm. for Sacramento. Again, Country in the Part 2 coming up with Billy Currington, Russell Dickerson, and of course, Cassie Ashton. Can't wait to have you out there for that. I'm so excited. So, where are you from originally? Could you tell us a little bit about your like musical journey and how you got to this point? Yeah, so I'm from a little town called California, Missouri. I know that's very confusing. <laughs> most people, <laughs> most people just hear California and they go, "Oh, we're in California," and I'm like, "No, no, Missouri." The abbreviation <laughs> is Camo, which I cannot make up. Wow. Um, my mom, I grew up between split households. My parents live, my dad lives way out in the middle of nowhere. My mom lives in town. And music started like as soon as I was born. I know that's always everyone's answer, but my yeah. mom was born and raised in Nashville. She sings, my older sister sings. I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> and um, we sang more than we spoke in my house. Aww. And, and, you know, in a little tiny town, there isn't much opportunity for singing in public besides maybe choir. So I was in beauty pageants and theater my whole life just to be on stage in sparkly pants. I would agree <laughs> as long as those two things could happen. Um, and then I, I went to Belmont um, here in Nashville. I majored in voice with a minor in music business. I signed my publishing deal the semester before I graduated and my record deal a year later. And that's right. how I got here. <laughs> I love it. And you actually have a single out with Keith Urban called Drop Top. I love that song. How did that come about? Uh, so I we're both on UMG Nashville. We're on the same label. And before I even signed paperwork with UMG, it was like maybe three or four months beforehand, I was flying back home and I got a spam email like from like, you know, a bunch of letters and numbers. And it was like, hey, K.A., I've got a song that I need swag on. Everyone's telling me you're the perfect person. Mm -hmm. And it was signed like K.U. And I was like, oh, and the subject of the email was urban. And I was like, wow, someone's really like pranking me right now. <laughs> So I deleted the email because I was like, there's, there's just no way that this is. No. And then the next morning, um, my label president, Cindy Mabe texted me and was like, Hey, I gave Keith Urban your email. Did you yes, get it for you? you? You didn't delete it. And I was like freaking out. My dad lives in the middle of nowhere. So I'm like screaming, mm -hmm. running around the shop. And she's like, can I, can I give him your phone number? And I was like, uh, yeah, but tell him that if he tries to call me, I live in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Ooh, my dog. <laughs> in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And if, you know, if I don't answer, just tell him to text me. <laughs> I had to lock mine outside because I was like, she's going to bark and scratch they at the like door. Yeah, see, they like to sing just like me. They get it from mom. Hey, guys. Listen, I'm, I'm a dog mom too. I get it. I'm on an interview. Anyway, so so I was like, tell tell him to text me if I don't get the call because I, I, I'm I not blocking him. I'm not ignoring him. I'm not ghosting him. So he said he was going to call me around noon. And he ended up calling. Guys. I love it. Really, they're giving you a show. This, this is, is the really, fun. This is prime time right here. This is fun doing interviews from home. I love it. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. Give it to them. They're You're killing it. Side. Yeah. They're like, I want you to know I'm a star, too. Y'all. Anyway, so he texts me, and he's like, hey, at like 6 p.m., and he's like, hey, I tried to call, 
And I was like, Ugh! so I'm telling my dad, we're in the shop. I'm like, where on this blasted property do I stand so that I do not hang up on Keith Urban? And so I, my dad's like, if you stand right there in the doorway and don't move, you won't drop the claw. So I like stood in the middle of our metal shop and I was like, hi. And he's like, are you really on a farm? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so what was amazing about the whole thing is one, he's like the nicest person that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And he was just as concerned as it being right for my artistry as it was his, which I thought was really great. I mean, yeah. he was Keith Urban. So if the song was about toilet paper, I was going to sing it. Sure. But it ended up being an amazing song that I was like, oh, yeah. girls, girls are going to scream to this. So I said yes. And that was that was it. Has he released that as a radio single yet? No. And it should have been. It's it so really should have been. been. I had everyone DMing me that was like, this is this is such a good song. Like, why is it not single? And I was like, hey. I don't have I don't have control over these things. Right. But the, the best girls. thing about it was he recorded me before he went on tour. He recorded me on a green screen singing the chorus. And so every night in arenas, I was there singing it with him on screen, which was oh, great. I love that. Yeah. At least you got that. Have you met him yet? Oh yeah, he's the best. Yeah. Okay. He was in the studio when I sang, which is which is really intimidating. Um, but he's he's so kind and so nice. Did you meet his wife? <laughs> No. Oh. She like was there. She was there. I, I, I performed with him Bridgestone um the last time he had a concert there. And I got off stage and I was like walking past and there she is. Her and Reese Witherspoon both are standing there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm cool. I'm so cool. I know. I would have been so awkward. I'm one of those. If I see someone no. that's like too big, too above me, I can't. I, I have to keep moving. I just act like they're not like there, like not in an insulting way, but like. Right. I'm normal. You're normal. I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So what's next for you? Are you working on an EP, an album? I mean, all of your singles are fantastic. Love them. But of course we want more. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, um, in radio, the standard practice is you have to go to radio for the first time. In country, the standard practice is you have to go to radio for the first time, which yeah. is what I'm doing now with Dates and Pickup Chucks. So hopefully when it goes number one when, when, when it goes number one way. <laughs> thank, so you. Good. thank you when it goes number one um then hopefully an album will be you know have a date have a date set that's all i've worked toward as an artist is an album because that's how i consume music is like top to bottom in the intended order so yeah. i'm i'm looking forward to that more than anything yeah i can only imagine so going back to the sparkly pants mm -hmm. <laughs> You have a video series about your style and your wardrobe and you invite people into your closet and you show off some of the outfits that you've actually designed mm -hmm. and wore during performances and music videos and whatnot. Yeah. When did you start designing clothes? Uh, really, really young, actually. My mom, she, like I said, she grew up in Nashville, really poor and she mm -hmm. didn't have much. And so she would get clothes from the church behind her house and sew them up to fit her. So she's self-taught. And then where I was in, like I said, beauty pageants and theater and everything my whole life, I was a bean pole of a person. And so either my clothes had to be taken in or mended or dance costumes had to be fixed. And so as she would sew, I, I was right beside her watching, wanting to learn anything my whole life that had the option of customization. I've always wanted to know how to express myself through every avenue that I stumbled across. Right. And then I really attached myself to sewing maybe in middle school she used to take me to the thrift store and buy me like 80s prom dresses and wedding dresses and i would bring them home and deconstruct them to see how they were put together and then redo them some way sometimes it worked sometimes i would wear the horrible creations in eighth grade to school like it was totally fine oh my and god then i'm when i signed a record deal it became a skill that was like invaluable you know sure. because being a new artist, your budget's like five dollars and thirteen cents. So if you if you can express yourself who you are as an artist and really look like a million bucks and and not be dressed like anyone else and express yourself through that, you know, with a tiny budget is just I wouldn't trade that skill for for anything. Yeah. So I was looking at your merch, which is very I mean, I love your merch. It's like stuff that I don't know, like anybody would wear, right? Instead of just like, oh, just a basic tour t-shirt. Do you design those as well? 
Oh yeah. So yeah, everything, everything that you see visually um, in my career, whether it's merch or um, single artwork or my website or any graphic or anything, that's all me. Really? Yeah. yeah. Girl, my, that's incredible. I love thank that. Thank you. Because it really is. Oh, you cut out. Because you're creating, people can say that. Not a lot of people have all those skills. Ooh, so do that. you have... Say that again, sorry. Because I said just not a lot of people have that skill. It's rare that you hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I love so go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, do you have aspirations of a clothing line one day or oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I think um that's like my second biggest dream behind you know playing arenas and stadiums mm -hmm. and being an artist is um having a clothing line. And I, I like the fact that if you're a fan of mine, you know that everything that you're getting, whether it's the song writing, the production, the merch, the graphic, the anything, you know that it literally came from my hands. Like yeah. this was not a boardroom of people cooking something up. This was not somebody telling me who I was going to be and you're getting that. You're literally getting as much of me as I can possibly give. And I think clothing um, is a huge part of that, that I would like to also give to people physically. Yeah. Perfect. So you're coming out to country in the park in September. We obviously can't wait. We'll have to show you around Sacramento a little bit. That's okay. Have you ever met Billy Currington or Russell Dickerson? They're also on the bill. Yeah. So Russell and I, he went to Belmont. He was, a. Uh, I think he graduated the year before I went and then he would come back to visit and we've, we run in the same social circles and he, he's one of the nicest, most genuine, talented mm -hmm. people ever. Like, and it's always so nice when you, when you think that someone's nice and talented and then you meet them and they're nice and talented. You're like, yes, right. <laughs> like one for the, one for the good guys. And Russell is definitely that way. So I can't wait to hang hug him, see him. I have never met Billy, um, but I am a huge Billy fan. So yeah. maybe I can like calm and be like, Hey, <laughs> Not quite, happy. right. Not quite Nicole Kim and walking away from her with Billy. We'll, we'll actually talk. I know. Her. I'll try to be like, hello, we're on the same label. What's up? <laughs> nice to finally meet you. Yeah. Yeah. And as for my co-host, Pat, who's obsessed with you, we'll make sure he doesn't linger too long. We'll keep him. No, we'll, we'll do good. We'll all hang out. It'll be fun. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, can't wait to see you, Country in the Park, too. Thank you so much for being here. And if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, make sure to do that, kncifm.com. Thank you, Cassie. Thank Have you. Cassie I'll see you guys then. All right. Bye.